KDB. Get in on the action with DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. New customers who deposit $5 or more can get a no-sweat bet for up to $1,000 back in a beautiful bonus bet. Basketball comes on every night, almost every other night. You can find something that you could play some of that bonus bet money on. Uh, download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use code VOCH, V-O-C-H, VOCH. New customers can get a no-sweat bet up to $1,000 if your first bet loses. Loses, okay, only on DraftKings Sportsbook with code VOCH, V O C H VOCH. The crown is yours. about to talk about the combine before the combine happened wait a minute we are tomorrow you, <laughs> sky you can so you can't have to <laughs> you can't <laughs> sky let me tell you something man i've never understood the pre-combine show and then after the combine we do what surprise you at the co- it's a surprise i don't want to ruin the surprise and talk about it so i don't want to do a whole bunch of pre-combine work because i like to be blind sky i think that's a that's a, uh, you know, that's a part of the process that I hold the most close to the chest. You know what I'm saying? The most romantic part of this process that I walk in not knowing shit. That's my favorite part of draft process, guy, is that, you know, you have, you know, some characters that come in and they know 300 prospects early. They might be wrong, but they know names early, right? I love to gladly walk into a senior bowl be like, hey, I don't know none of these kids, but you just keep seeing the Baylor kid beat the hell out of people. And now I learn, oh, that's Gabe Hall. You get to see me learn in in in, in real time, Scott. I'm walking into the combine. I don't know who the fastest person is. I don't know who's on the Feldman's freak list. I don't I, I, I don't I don't know. I don't know nothing, Scott. But when we walk out of the combine, that's when we're going to get the real information. But Scott. Besides Stephen Jones setting Cowboy Twitter ablaze, and besides the combine that ain't really happened yet, we ain't got shit to talk about. Did you hear what I said? So if we ain't got nothing to talk about, we will hit you with the bestest of a damn mailbag, you hear me? Hey, Bachi. B-O-C-H-L-O-N-B-A-R-D-I. Sky, are you a fan of the NPR Tiny Desk series? Oh, uh, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Those things have been... been- Pretty damn amazing over the last like decade, it feels like. Scarface's one was incredible, but Jeezy just had one. Did you see did you see Jeezy's tiny disc? Nah, but I saw Va- or I saw Foots his uh, opinion on it though. Did Foots have a good opinion? <laughs> I I think it was Foots. I matter of fact, I'm gonna put words in his mouth because it might not have been Foots, but somebody on Twitter was talking about I just you know, Jeezy wasn't the greatest one up there, but yeah, it, I, I, I think it's horrible. <laughs> yeah, that's so what was, that's what I'm trying to that's what I'm trying I don't want to put it in Foots' mouth, but somebody said okay. it wasn't good. If Fuss loved it, that'll be something else for me and him to fuss about. But, you know, we ain't got to cross the road. I thought it was horrific. I don't think it had nothing to do with the crowd, Alpha Maze. But anyway, I'm being point guard about the best in the business, giving him time to put his hand on his button. Master Will Skywalker still. See, I thought I had my mailbag button, but but I don't have it on here. All good. Hey right, man, it's all good. Hey, oh, Scott, that's that's your show. That's A to Z Dallas yeah, in the morning, 8 30, 10 30 on. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yes, yeah, but fuck the show. Yeah, if I whatever your show can do. <laughs> I gotta get a different. Gotta get a different mailbag, but we should make this a thing. I think we're gonna yeah, yeah. enjoy today's segment, mailbag segment. Um, and, and Scott, this is the funny part, right? Because when we're in dire need of a mailbag, people do not show up with like you know, then y'all, y'all, y'all don't really come through for me like that, you know. But this is a 
Okay, well, well, let's do a mailbag today. But y'all hit me with some incredibleness, okay? So just for everybody on Twitter watching right now, for everybody on the uh, YouTube side that have, that has left some mailbag work, I'm just giving you a war call right now. It's for you. It's for you. Let me actually retweet that right now. Be like, going live on YouTube to end. These. All right, letting everybody know that we're gonna do it. So this is what we're gonna do. Will Scott Walk still? Yep. I sent you a few of them. You're gonna bring those up. We're gonna have a conversation about those. But like I said, there were so many. Like I said, there were there were there were so many. You know, questions. We're gonna um we're gonna do a couple of more. Okay, because at the end of the day, we do have to get to at least four fifteen. Went to five fifteen yesterday, so I can only promise four fifteen. Um, if you have any disagreements, you can feel free to call it to the show. The number is it's on the screen right here. All right. So with that being said, Skywalk still, I want to jump right into it. You feel me? Gotcha. I want to jump right into it. We'll just do it like this. <laughs> Shouts out Skywalk still. Let's start with Mike Poland, man. Shouts out to him across the across the lake, right? Man, Mike Poland one time, man, he was like, yo, Vaj, we ain't doing nothing for the holidays, man. Come out here and kick it with all the people from London and Germany and Russia and Ireland and <laughs> and Ukraine and Norway and all the people from Denmark that would love to see you. And I almost got upset because I'm like, damn, like, I'm doing something for Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be with my goddamn family for Thanksgiving. <laughs> no, Vaj, you need to work 24-7, brother. Of course I got something to do. But Sky, when I moved to Dallas, and next Thanksgiving come around, we'll have some shit to do this time because I'll be yeah. close by. I, I can't drive to Dallas and drive here then drive to Natchez. That's that's nonsense. But Mike Poland hit us up on the any draft questions for the show today. It's probably midnight over there, so he'll watch this when he wake up. But he says, start, sit, cut. Marvin Harrison Jr., Malik Neighbors, and Brian Thomas Jr. How I interpret that, how I in, interpret this. Is this is a way for us to shit on Brian Thomas Jr. <laughs> and for him and to to sneakily get me to admit who I like more out of Marvin Harrison and Malik Neighbors? I think this is very. This is a very. This this is sneaky, Scott. This is sneaky because it's like Scott. Watch this, Scott. Who is the greatest wide receiver of all time? Jerry Rice, <laughs> Randy, Randy Moss. Moss, John Ross. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Or John Ross, who's the best wide receiver of all time, and that's just me setting you up for a Randy for a Randy Moss Jerry Rice debate, right? Yeah. Brian Thomas is not in the league of these other extraordinary gentlemen. He just is not. Um, now, if you meant to, you know, put, you know, Roma Dunze instead of Brian Thomas Jr., then maybe you'll have a have a better question there for you know for the for the for the three of them start see cut but this is a clear we just gonna cut Brian Robinson right <laughs> it, we, we don't even want him on the team right you, now you don't, you don't want him on the team so bad you don't call that man Brian Robinson what I call him <laughs> <laughs> what his name is what, Brian that, Thomas that, Jr. That, that's Bijan cuz I'm sorry I, I want him about it Scott I want him going so bad I'm just trying to from my mind Marvin Harrison Jr. Malik Neighbors and Brian Thomas yes Jr. right so let's just erase Brian Thomas Jr. Because if if we're to look at the top three receivers that's that's going to come off the board, Harrison, Neighbors, and um, Roma Dunze, those three dudes are all elite. Those three dudes are all wide receiver ones. Like, Scott, like, it's really – these aren't, like, direct comparisons, but it's like Larry Fitzgerald, Odell Beckham, and, like, Julio Jones, you know what I'm saying? Like, like yeah. pick one, like, like pick what you, what you want the most, find out what you like the most as a play caller, the dude that you like on the team. I'm sure that like, when we get a chance to talk to these dudes, combine is going to matter. Pro days are going to matter. Interviews, right? Find who's the laziest, find who wants to work the hardest, find. Oh, you just, you, you, just, I know who your dad is. So what are you going to come threaten us? And we, you know what I'm saying? Find out who these guys are, Scott. <laughs> Find out who 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 really wants to be better than all these guys, right? Yeah. If I was a GM, we always hear about these combine talks, these these interviews. Hey, if you was a bird, would you get a crocodile pregnant, right? They ask questions like this just to mess with your psychological, Scott. I would ask, right? Or I would just say, I'd be like, hey, Marvin Harrison, um, we just talked to Roma Duns and he said that he's he's better than you. How would you feel, right? And if Marvin said, well, that's Rome's opinion, it is what it is, da-da-da, boom, boom, boom. 
But then what if Marvin said, man, F Rome, I'm going to go out here and show Rome that I'm better than him. And I'm going to go and compete and be better than Rome. Like, depending on those answers that they ask you at the combine, it's not exactly that, but it's just an example. Depending on what those answers are, that's where a lot of these teams are going to end up drafting these dudes because I think it's razor close. Vash don't get a chance. Go ahead, Wilson. That goes back to, we talked about this a lot before, especially when it came to uh, a guy like, Man, fat and Sam Williams, just speaking for Cowboys talk right now. Who talked to them? Who I need, exactly. Them? I need to know how much do you, and, and this is a cliche because of Damn. Jason Garrett, but do you love the game and how much do you love the game? Do you love it enough to where you're putting in that type of work off the field? That doesn't necessarily just mean working out. Are you making the necessary sacrifices, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, or is the game kind of secondary to what you want to do? off the field or whatever, or it's not that big of a deal to you. Because let me know now so I don't waste my time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Fair enough, Sky. So, Vach doesn't have the the man, Dan really got some nonsense over here, boy. Dan got us yeah. stuck with Nation Boss. Well, Boss Man is... Dan in Kansas City or some shit. I saw somebody ask he, me to get a He ring. went to Miami, Seattle, and now he's on. he was signed to Kansas City Reserve Squad. So <sighs> not even practice got- squad. Reserve. You have got to find out if these dudes like football or not. So Vach doesn't have the ability to answer or or to ask questions or to interview these guys. Not yet. Let me down to Marco this. I don't have the ability to interview these guys yet. But just based on what I'm watching on film, if I had to pick, I'm cutting Brian Robinson, Brian Thomas. I'm cutting Brian Thomas. I'm benching Marvin Harrison, and I'm starting Malik Neighbors, right? And this is just me. If I'm an offensive play caller, what do I want for my offense, right? Both of these guys are yet guys. Both of these guys are catch the football guys. Um, Marvin, of course, is a little bigger. Somebody was like, Vach, is Marvin just a possession receiver? Well, allegedly, Marvin's going to run a 4-3. We'll see how that goes. I don't think his big ass is going to run a 4-3, but we'll see. Actually, I'll say tall. I don't think Marvin Tall yes. is going to run a 4-3 because Rome big. Rome's 215, mm-hmm. 220 almost. Marvin like like 205. But Rome's going to run good as well. But I don't really care about your 40 time all that much because some of my, my favorite wide receivers of all time run 4-5s and low 4-4s. Are you yet, guy? Can I move you all over the formation? Can you make a man miss? All those kind of elements I love. Do you fight the football when you when you uh, when you catch it, and do you have issues with focus drops and things along those lines? Right. All these dudes are relatively close, and it sounds like 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 I'm nitpicking. Botch, you're nitpicking. You have to. You got three elite wide receiver prospects. I would slowly but surely say, "Hey, man, Malik Neighbors does all the things that I like. Me personally, that I like." Over Marvin Harrison. And now look, don't get it wrong. Don't get don't get it twisted. If I can have both, give me both. I'll find a way to use Marvin. I will find a way to use Marvin. But if I could just talk about Yak for a minute, Yak is my thing. When Marvin has the ball and nobody touches him, Marvin is a Yak guy. But so is neighbors. Just y'all is at the catch. Like they both, if they don't get touched at all, they can be good Yak guys. But the minute somebody touches Marvin, he just has this. Maybe it's him being, you know, kind of longer, you know, you know. He tends to fall when you grab him and pull on him and all that. Man, Malik Neighbors got a little dog in him. I ain't saying Marvin don't. I've seen Malik Neighbors block the hell out of people after getting pissed off, and I've seen Malik Neighbors not fall when somebody touched him. And I've seen Malik Neighbors make the first man miss. All those things are super important to me. So I'm starting Neighbors. I'm sitting Marvin Harrison. If anything happened to Neighbors, I got a hell of a back up wide receiver. And uh, I'm cussing my GM out because why the hell I got uh, Brian <laughs> Thomas – on my roster, not Roman does that. Uh, Scott, did you have anything on that? No, I just kept thinking about could this be a situation? And this is this is obviously on on a far end of the spectrum here. Could we be talking five, six years from now? Where you remember was Antonio Brown and and uh, yeah. Megatron? Sure. You know, both fantastic receivers, both opposite ends of the spectrum. One six four, two thirty. Other, you know, five ten, one ninety. Malik Neighbors is not as small as Antonio Brown, but you know, can can you know accelerate, get open, yak guy, make people miss tight. Uh, mm-hmm. Where Harrison's a big tall guy, I think we could be sitting here like both of these dudes will be great five years from now. Yeah, man. And uh, the you know thing about Antonio, <clears throat> the dude he is now was not the dude he was when he was a Chippewa. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and 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 
he just it, you know. I mean, being a I don't of, know, bro. Did you see his his picture with the grill yeah. in his mouth? That up was crazy. He, he, okay, he was he, he was he was definitely oh, goofy oh, you as mean hell. Player as a player for sure. As yeah. a player, okay. um, you know, profile matters, man. Height matters. Being a part of these schools matter. There's a dude right now to play left tackle for Yale. And he played against a bunch of engineers and mortgage loan processors and all that kind of shit. Uh, Kieran Amagadigie. I know I ain't say his last name right, but I'm going to act like I did. If he, if he played for Alabama, I can at least go, all right, at least I, I see like, you every Sunday. Well, I got to say, bless you. You said how you said. Akeem, <laughs> That's right. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> hey, it sounded like man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But you know, these are three dudes that were in the top six teams, and they were like, well, you know, LSU trash. But like Heisman, Jaden Daniels, his wide receiver one. Like, and if I talk to Brian Broad, is you know, some people say that he's that he's biased for LSU, but he's Brian. Brian telling me he's one of the best LSU receivers of all time. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? One of the best college football LSU receivers of all time. And I don't, I don't necessarily disagree with him. You know what I'm saying? It's just all these dudes have elite written all over. If Malik and Marvin didn't exist, Roman Dunsey will be a, he'll, he'll be the fourth overall player off the board or something like that, most likely. But it is what it is. Good question though. Let's move on to the next one from Joey Richards. Jr. Drafts is his shout handle. Shouts out to Joey. Shouts out to jo Joey. Call your show. No, I'm just saying. Shouts out to him for the question. Okay, shouts out to Joe for sure. Uh, would love your take on Armarius Mims's lack of experience. At what pick would you start to feel comfortable taking a player like him? It's tough, man. Armarius Mims played eight games total. Damn. Um, he was a rotational guy last year. The right tackle got hurt. He finished the season, played in the playoffs, played in the championship game, um, played this year. And had like a little ankle injury or something like that, and he had to miss that huge, that huge, that huge, uh, that huge, huge portion of the season. But um, Georgia has been an offensive line factory the past couple of years. We're always talking about a guard or or tackle coming from Georgia the past three years. So you got to sit down. You got to sit down. You you just can't always play for four years like you know some of these other schools or whatever, right? Like if you Jordan Morgan of Arizona. Ain't nobody else playing playing tackle but Jordan Morgan, of Arizona. But J.C. Latham, we just hearing from him because there was a Alabama tackle before him, and an Alabama tackle before him, and a Bama tackle before him. That's just how these you know these things go sometimes, man. But our Marys Mims, eight games, and I wouldn't say that he's raw, but he plays like he's not very experienced. I've been up here talking this whole time like I ain't watch Scott. Let me pull some film up for everybody. Um. He plays like he's not very experienced, right? And this is where me in particular, this is just, just watching how I like to draft, right? I love the older players. I love senior bowl players. I love the, you know, the guys that's been doing this for a long time. They got three or four years under the belt. They just seem to be a little more technically refined, but it's some about natural ass whoops guy that you just can't run from, you know? And it yeah. all comes down to that needs to be on ESPN somewhere. I'm sorry. All natural ass whoops. Somebody, somebody needs to to quote Vach, put the black and white over it. 2024 NFL draft logo behind it. That is that's that's profound right there. I like that. Scott, you cannot be all natural ass whoop, man. You just you just you just can't. I can look at Olu Fashano. I still don't know if I'm saying his last name right. I'm just gonna live and die by it. Fashano, whatever. Penn State. He's as nuanced as he gets, Scott. He's technically advanced as, as he could possibly get. And and I love nuance guy. I love technique guy, right? But the downside is, okay, well, this is about as good as you're going to get. Our Marius Mims is a stud. Got a some film? dog, Scott. I'm, I'm pulling up right now. He's a, he's a stud, Scott Walker still. And he really ain't got a clue what to do with his hands right now. So, so I'm at a crossroad. <laughs> I'm at a crossroads, guy. Here we go. Uh, he's the right tackle, everybody. Our Marius Mims. So this is where I'm at with this guy. Great size and length. Incredible athlete. Oh, here we go. Uh, natural power. But there was one test in particular that sold me on our Marius Mims guy. Shouts out to Dalton Miller. He um, tweeted yesterday. He was like, hey, man, J uh, JT Tuomalau. He's a pass rush for Ohio State. He was like, JT Tuomalau. I know he beat the hell out of Olu Fashonu, 
but he kind of beat Joe all too, right? And I got tagged in that post somehow. And I was like, hey man, oh uh 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 JT two of them now what both of them kids. But the one dude that JT two of them couldn't beat was our Marius Mims. Our Marius Mims was beating the hell out of JT to him allow, and he didn't even know how to play offensive line yet, Scott. They go something right here. And he don't even know how to how to how to play offensive line yet. And the top two tackles, right? Projected air quote, top two tackles. We talking about Olu, we talking about Joe O. Look at him right here, Scott, just grabbing the shit out, and JT stuck. Let me go. <laughs> <laughs> and our Marius Mims just sitting down on him, right? So in my mind, our Marius Mims is a bona fide stud, and he has no clue what he's doing. So you got to ask yourself, man, are you floor guy or are you ceiling guy? But yeah, there's was, somewhere. Really well. Look at this movement right here, Scott. But he don't know how, he don't know what he's doing. He don't know how, he don't know how, he, don't know how to, he, he don't even know to put his mouthpiece in right now, Scott. His mouthpiece <laughs> is hanging on. Scott. He don't know he don't know to put his mouthpiece. Scott, there's this. This healthy medium where Vosh falls in. I love the upside player, but I need you to be able to play. look at this nastiness right here, Scott, from right yeah. tackle. 65. I just need you to be, I need you to be good right now. You could be raw, but I need you to be good right now. And you mean to tell me he's out here putting hands on people that the top two tackles can't beat? I mean, they took our Marius Mim, Scott. And they said, look, our Marius, you only five games into your damn career right now. You've been a rotational player your whole life. We're going to drop you into the playoffs right now. We're going to just, just, hey, here's the playoffs, the the, the biggest stage of college football. JT Tua Malau over there beating the shit out of everybody else. Special and care, Marius, I was just about to bring up Tyler Smith. He doesn't have the, you know, the inexperience of Tyler, Tyler Smith. Tyler was ridiculous. Tyler used to block people like this. <laughs> and it worked. <laughs> he, he ain't as bad as Tyler. He's not as bad as Tyler. But but saying the natural ass whoop, though, was there yes. with Tyler Smith. He just needed to figure out his hands. So natural ass whoop, natural athleticism. Our Marius is bigger somehow. Like his, his, his length, and I think he's a little taller than Tyler. Um, Much but he's Tyler, six five, he's six seven. Cool, big dude. So fair. So he's in that same mold of hey, I don't know what I'm doing, y'all, but I'm just gonna put my hands in two places and figure it out. And he's figuring it out versus SEC competition. Then he goes to the playoffs and he whoops up on them. So he's only played eight games, but boy, them some bona fide eight games, guy. Now you like position movement for him? Play right tackle, but can you, can you move to the left? That's gonna come down to I'm okay. gonna work you out privately to see if you can move the opposite way. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? But I, you know, I'm not calling him slow, <laughs> right? But sometimes these dudes are raw for a reason. Sometimes these dudes don't move for a reason. Um, Olu is a guy that I would move around. Joe Alt is a guy that I would move around. Talisi Fuaga looks comfortable at right tackle. I'll leave him there. Our Marius look comfortable at right tackle. I'll leave him there. I'll try J.C. Latham at left tackle to see if I like it, but I'll move him around. Kingsley Sewell Matea, I'll move him around. Um, Troy Fats look like a player that I leave on the left side, left tackle, left guard, but I wouldn't move him to the other side, right? Because he already got, like, body deficiencies with, like, his length and things like that. So you don't want him to have to be short-armed and on the opposite side. You know what I'm saying? It's just it's just certain 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 things you're looking for. But Armarius, I'm leaving him I'm leaving him at at right tackle and I'm just going to let him continue to learn the position. I don't want him to be raw at right tackle, not really have the best nuance at right tackle and we go, "I right, I'm going to ruin you and put you on the left side now." I don't want to do that to him. He's he's learning now. Leave him there and let him fly. Now maybe later in his career, once he's settled in a little bit, then you can move him around. But I'm I'm keeping him right there. Now. Um, somebody even asked one day, like, uh, like Vash, do you think he could play guard for you? I think he's a natural attack. I don't think he'll be he'll be good at guard because his arms. Yeah, yeah, Mims. Oh, wow. Um, Mims got the ass whoop to be a good guard, but sometimes with these long arm dudes, if they shoot, they'll shoot too high in these little bitty three techs to get up under them sometimes, right? Or they'll shoot too wide. You got to be, you know, you you probably got to be right at borderline or at least be nuanced enough to change your arm angle so I can work up under somebody shorter than me, right? If you look at Mims, well, I already turned off the I mean, film. just flat out, it's it's not many that convert from 6'7 tackles to guards. Just there, Robert Gallery stands out, but 6'7 into guard and being a high-end guard, it's, it's, I don't think it happens that often. 
you have to be a heavily nuanced player. And if I'm just assuming, I don't think our Marius man is a very heavily nuanced player. But that's just me talking to him. That's just me talking. Uh, let me check the. Okay, 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 okay. Let's let's get one question. We'll get to Reek and get back to the questions. All right. Shouts out to our guy Bender, 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 Bender from Shouts Saudi Arabia. Bender. Let's see what he's talking about. What's up, Vice? What's up, Bender? He says Jackson Powers Johnson, according to most mocks, is gone by twenty four. Should we sign Connor Williams? Boy, look, I ain't got a button. This. Uh, should we sign Connor Williams? He's a guard who learned how to play center like you always wanted and talked about. He is the highest rated center in uh, in PFF for what it's worth. Or do we take a guard and teach him how to play center? That's a fantastic the, question, Ben. Appreciate you. I got your button for you, bro. This is really how Vach feels. Is the name Connor Williams. Oh, my God, bro. Oh, hell no, man. <laughs> Appreciate you, Scott. Um, so here's my thing, Band. Fantastic question, by the way. So Connor Williams is not a guard that learned how to play center. He's a tackle that they made play guard, and then he learned how to play center. So he's a tackle. He's a tackle build trying to play center right now, right? I still would love to see what pro Connor Williams look like at, at tackle, but whatever. Actually, I'm lying. I would not love to see that, but whatever. Um, so when I when I when I talk about the tackle that learns how to play guard, or pardon me, taking a um taking a guard and making them play center, that's more so I'm looking for traits, right? Like I'm not looking for a player that literally lined up at guard and then because you know. If you put Terrence Steele at guard and then move him to center, I wouldn't be happy about that because his his body type doesn't doesn't match up. His player traits doesn't match up. What I'm looking for, and just in case anybody's curious, this is what I'm looking for with all guards, right? There's a certain power prerequisite that I need from you. I need you to be this strong, like a like a like a certain level of power, strong tenacity. I need you to dig people out of a gap because typically. Um, these fights happen faster on the inside, right? Some people think that guards are just bad tackles and centers are just bad guards, right? All three are different. I play center, I play tackle, I play a guard. They're not the same. And I'm, I'm glad I was able to, you know, um, yeah, how can uh, somebody say that? that? Just, just tackle and guard sometimes are just different in how they look. You know sure. I mean? Sure. Um, so think about it like this. If you had to, let's just say fist fight somebody, right? Scott, if you had to fist fight somebody in a bathroom versus having to fist fight somebody in an open field, if you, if you in a bathroom with somebody and it's crowded in there and you got a small amount of space, you ain't got a whole bunch of time to get your life together. You have to get into that exchange and defend yourself right now. If we're in an open field, I'm taking off my backpack. You might take off your shirt. You might crack your knuckle sky, take off your watch. And then you'll, you'll, you know, get into your fight. That's how guard versus tackle is, right? Center is guard plus, okay, I'm going to delegate here. We're going to line everybody up. We're going to communicate with people behind me. And then I'm going to Voltron myself with another guard to then beat the hell out of somebody, right? So what them kids did versus Cam Newton yesterday, they're centers. Cause they all work together for a goal, right? They, they, they have to find help and they have to merge with another entity <laughs> and communicate in some way. And that's how they achieve their goal. But Cam is just a guard. Cam just throw people around. Cam just use his brute strength, right? So Connor Williams, the reason he wouldn't be a, a fun interior player for me because he's not very strong. He's not very strong, and I don't like not powerful offensive linemen. I don't want my offensive linemen to be moved around. For example, Tyler Biotish, who's been your center for the past four or so years, when we watch film on the run game, Tyler's not getting any movement at all. No movement. Tyler will. Tyler's what we call hat-on-hat guy. Sky, tell me if I'm wrong. Tyler will be great in Miami, right? Well, he'll just kind of put a hat on the hat and let the ball get away to where he'll kind of get across somebody's body, but the ball carrier gets wide and we don't have to worry about running behind you. If you are running in B gap and Tyler's responsible for a gap, Tyler's going to put a hat on a gap, but he's not going to move a gap. That's what I want in the center. If you watch Frank Ragnow, 
Frank Rag now is moving bodies out of A-gap. Creed Humphrey is moving bodies out of A-gap. Yeah, he's scooping. He's scooping people out of A-gap, Scott. Now, everybody has a philosophy, but I'm just talking about Vach in particular. Some people uh, don't need centers to be very powerful because they just got combos in their system. They're more outside zony, so they're more athletic. Vach in particular, want I want to pop because Cowboys do a lot of B-gap stuff. A lot of A-gap stuff, sometimes C-gap stuff. It actually took us many weeks to get to C-gap, guy. I want a center that can deal with a top-tier A-gap player and not receive help. Or a center that's powerful on his own, paired with Tyler Smith's power or Zach Martin's power, and they double power somebody. I'm just tired of the center that's just hanging on for dear life. I'm only strong because Tyler's strong or Tyler Smith is strong, or I'm only moving you because Zach Martin is here. But when I'm one-on-one with DJ reader or Leonard Williams or Deron Payne or Jonathan Allen or Jordan Davis or Jalen Carter, it's a lot of people Cowboys got to run into. If I'm one-on-one with those dudes, I don't get movement on those guys. Tyler Biotis. So when I say I want a player that played guard to come play center, let's take Graham Barton, for example, right? Fuster King think I don't love Graham Barton no more. Fuster King's mistaken. (laughs) Fuster King King is very much so mistaken. We still love Graham Barton here. But take a look at Graham Barton here. And Graham Barton is a very, very powerful player. Graham Barton is going to be your left tackle. He's number 62 for Duke right here, right? Take a player like Graham Barton and let's go, okay. Let's just pause this right here, right? Graham Barton gets bull rush, one, two steps, and we just stop moving. Tyler Biotis would be into the quarterback right now. Now, now whoever this right tackle is getting smoked, (laughs) that's Biotis, right? You just keep getting bull rush into the damn quarterback. But we're looking at at Graham Barton, your left tackle, 62. I want somebody that can anchor and get somebody not in the, the, the lap of my quarterback or not directly into my running back while they're, while they're in, they're in, um, in, um, in, um, pass pro, right? I want somebody nasty. I want somebody physical. I want somebody that can move somebody. I, I want somebody that can scoop. I want somebody that can scoop. And I look at Graham Barton. I say, Hey man, give me this physicality. Give me this movement, this, this finishing ability. Give me that. And let's put that at center. So I don't have to worry about a center. That's not very powerful. Scott, that makes sense. Yeah, Connor Williams, you know, a, a product of a perfect system for his who he is. Uh, you know, he's an athletic guy. He came, man, I don't know if people remember, he came in sub 300 pounds and was heralded at Texas for being an athlete. So gets moved down the line all the way at center and shouts out to him. You know, he, he was able to, you know, pick up what you have to pick up at the center position. But Mike McDaniel's scheme is, I think, tailored fit for a guy like Connor Williams. But for what the Cowboys need, you, you, you need some, you need, you need to be a bit stronger. Uh, and and I don't think he'd he'd work out here. Appreciate you, Bandit. That's a fantastic question. Let's get one more. Then I'm gonna check out the phones and get back into it. Shouts out to Anime Dolphin. He's been tapped in with us for a long time in draft season. He's a Dolphin fan, and he watches anime. I assume. Shouts out to him. He says, "Um, I know that tackle is very is a very important position, but with the quality and depth of this year's tackle class." Do you think teams may wait to take tackles until the later rounds in favor of positions that will run out faster? It's false. No way. Not this time. We created it. Not this time. And I'll tell you why. The later rounds. I'm guessing he means second. <laughs> Sky, you That's are about as late as you go. <laughs> Sky, you are so fantastic to get your job. We 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 right here, Sky. Let me tell you something. That maybe works with running back. Cause there's a lot of them that might work. That might work with wide receiver, right? It's a lot of them in the league, right? It's a lot of good receivers, you know, yeah. that'll possibly work with pass rushers. You know, it's a lot of cool, you know what I'm saying? Offensive tackle in the league is horrific. Tackle is bad. It ain't good. And there are teams that need tackles. So what you telling me, 
And anime dolphin, I ain't saying it's you, but it's, I'm 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 not talking to you, but I'm talking to your question, right? <laughs> I'm talking to your question. I'm talking to your question. If you're the Tennessee Titans and you need offensive line, Peter Skaronski not good in my opinion. Talisi Fawaga's on the board for you. You're gonna say, nah, I'm good. I'm gonna pass on Fuwaga and come back in the second round. And in the second round, you gotta end up drafting. The Yale character. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> the kid from Yale, or you got to draft Dominique Pooney or something. I don't want to get cute with elite players. I never want to get cute with elite players or players that I think are really, really blue chip, good. Blue chip types is what you're getting at. I don't want to get cute with those guys. So if Joe Alt is on the board and you need offensive line, take Joe. So let's just do this, right? First round offensive tackles who I think are going to go. Joe is going to go. Olu is going to go. Talisi is going to go. JC is all going to be top 15. Our Marius Mims most likely should go. He may go late first. He's going to go. Jordan Morgan, if you pray for it, may be there. Tyler Guyton is going to be gone. Troy's going to be a guard. Graham's going to be a guard center. The kid from Yale play at Yale. Are you really willing to pass on our Marius Mims for Patrick Paul? I don't think Patrick Paul is good at all. I just don't think he's good at all. Like, he's bad. I was going to bring him up, too, because I know that's the guy. That's your uh, Osiris Torrance this year. This guy, he works. On, I'll, I'll take Osiris Torrance over Patrick Paul. I'll take him. But I'm just saying that's that's your. For this year. Yeah, yeah. For this year. Scott, I'll take Greg Rousseau over Patrick I, Paul. I ain't going to do I'll Greg because you you just thought, you didn't think Greg was the first round. You thought the other boy was better. And he kind of is. He is better. He <laughs> is better. That's fair enough. That's fair. But, Scott, what I'm saying is you don't want to be left holding the bag, man. They say this. Look, they say this on Wall Street all the time, dog. Yo, yo, see profit, take profit, dog. See and, profit, take profit. And don't get profit. bored of it. And never. Don't get caught holding the bag, dog. You Don't just be like, oh, it's plenty offensive. Because, dog, before you know it, it ain't going to be plenty offensive linemen no more. You're going to get stuck with Kingsley Sewell Mateo, who's a cool player. But just listen to what I said. You you gonna get stuck with the cool player, but you could have had the elite player. Never never pass on the elite dudes. Uh, where's my where are my entertainers? Says Guyton ain't far behind Paul. That's a lie. That's a lie. Guyton got his issues, and I'm not as high on Guyton as others are. Patrick Paul can't play. At least Guyton can play a little bit. <laughs> I love how you just Guyton has his challenges. And as and Scott, I'm not I'm 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 technique guy. I'm floor guy. Paul, terrible. <laughs> now look, now watch Patrick Paul go to go go to the team with the best That's offensive line. It's the line coming right back to you. I'll take that chance, boy. I'll take that chance. Callahan can't fix him. I'll take that chance. Patrick Paul is not good, bro. He is not good. Like it ain't nothing about his guy. It ain't like he, you know, it ain't like, okay, well, he just tall, so he missed sometimes because he raw. He wins sometimes. I ain't seen him win yet. I ain't seen him win yet. Terrence still at the senior bowl lost every rep. He somehow won more reps than Patrick Paul this shit. <laughs> <laughs> Patrick hey. Paul ain't good, dog. I'm sorry. When 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 your boy Dane Brugler says he has to work on his rudimentary technique and hand, I, rudimentary is crazy. No, ever, yo, Scott, don't, Scott, listen, let me tell you something. Scott, we friends, and I don't want to, I don't want to mess up the bag, right? But don't ever tell me I got to work on my rudimentary skills. Hey, dog, no, you got to work on your your rudimentary delivery, watch. Like, yo, Scott, never. Hey, bro, at the combine, Dane, Dane Brugler, come here, Dane. We got to talk, bro. But Scott, this why I got questions for Dane. If he got to work on his rudimentary skills, how he, yeah, right. <laughs> how's he ranked that high? Why is he ranked in the 30s if he got to work on his rudimentary skills? This dude they behind him, Patrick, that got, said Go Patrick ahead. Paul need hooked on phonics for his hand usage, bro. That's crazy. <laughs> That's madness. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> rudimentary. Oh man, yeah, anime dog fan, take the take the top tier tackle dog. Take the take the take the elite player. Oh man! All right, let's get let's get one uh phone call in, and we're gonna get back into the back into the shit. Reek call. Let's see what Reek talking hey, about. Reek What's up, Reek? Call. 
Hello. Hello. Is that the drop or is that Reek? That was the drop. <laughs> <Is that Kevin? laughs> Who talking right now? Yep. What up, Reek? What's up, Vox? What's going? What's going on? Uh, Scott, how y'all doing? That could be Kevin Gates. I don't even know. But what's good with you, man? Life good, dog. We just doing this uh this uh mailbag show. Easy peasy. What you got for us today? Uh, uh you know, I, it took me some time to think about this, man. Uh, I really, I believe, I believe in what you're saying as far as the center because we can't, we have been lacking since Frederick's been gone. Mm-hmm. Uh, and if we got a chance to get a good center, why not go get him? Especially if he's going to be in a good range. This mm. is the this is one of the reasons why I kind of want the Cowboys to go ahead and extend Dak, so we can extend Dak, extend CD, so we can open up. You know, what I mean, open these books up. So we're going to be. <laughs> we go ahead, we, yeah, we trying to fix the audio, Rick. Yeah, yeah, we just we trying to get the audio right. That's good. Yeah, you good. Yeah, it's cool. Um, yeah, man, I, I would like to do that because. I don't want to just be in the position just to have to sit at 24 because we all know that Philadelphia, they, they're going to need a center too. They're going to be looking for a center too. And if that good center from uh, Oregon is sitting right here, what makes us think if he's like two or three picks ahead of us that Philly won't go get him? Because I mean, they know that they, they need a new center over there. They, Philly got so it's like They drafted a, a yeah. center, they put the guard, and maybe he's their heir apparent. Maybe. Cam, I, I don't know. Cam, 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 Cam Jerrigan's and Landon Dickerson play center. center. Yeah, I don't, I don't think they're going to be drafted. So they could technically just move one of them over and get a guard later, or just, just rock out. They okay. need, they, they need drafted, a corner. Then they draft a young boy, a couple, a couple, Cam. uh, like No, no, no. They drafted a tackle that played or the guard that played against us. So maybe they slide Cam Jerrigan's or Dickerson over and they put the young boy in from. I think it was like a second or third round pick last year. Alex in the chat, you know what I'm talking about. Steen can play too. Steen can play. Steen, too. yeah, Steen. Steen That's him. Yeah. Go ahead, Ari. Like, but like you guys are saying, I, I think we do need a, a good elite type of center that's coming out of college, a good young center, because uh, that's one thing I can get a Cowboys. Feeling the quarterback. For. They, yeah. They've been drafting pretty good linemen over the years. Yeah. Uh, and if he's there in race, I want them to put themselves in position to have our team uh, loaded loaded up enough to where we can make a move. In the draft, if we see him right there, and we think somebody else is going to get him to move up, you know what I mean? And then I want them to also have a plan. If they don't see that guy, can we move back and get more picks later mm. in the draft too? Sure. You know what I mean? Because we get away the later some of the later picks. Sure. But like you said, Vash, you guys are right. We do need a good, a better center, and if we can get, if we can draft him, go get him because we do, we are going to have some real tough games against some good teams uh, this next season. So yeah, I don't want I don't want Dak back there running for his life, running for his life, and I don't want the line to keep getting pushed in his lap. Yeah, the offensive line to getting pushed in his lap. So we do need power up there. Yeah, appreciate you, Reek. That's all. Yeah, all right now. I let y'all appreciate you, Reek. Good call. Hey man, I think um I think like if I can just be honest about Philly, man, they should definitely look at their wide receivers. They should definitely look at their linebacker. Well, linebacker probably second round for them. Uh, they 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 should look at other places. I think they're they're fine at center. But I will say this: even if they draft a center, he ain't gonna be better than Travis. So I mean, and uh, Jason, yeah, he's not gonna be better than Jason. So you know. I'm I'm more so looking for offensive line help to help with the run. Like yeah. D- Dak is fine with the pass blocking that we have. I'm not, I don't really worry about that. I, you know, I feel about Terrence. I think he's gonna be better. Uh, bring Tyron back. You're good there. You, you know, you, you know Zach and, and Tyler. You're good. I mean, if you got one deficiency up front, you, you, your quarterback should be able to maneuver around that. I I want offensive line to help with the run. We we you know if we're not going to be schematically good with it, then we need ass whoop up front to, to to do it. Yeah. Um. And you know, fantastic point by you. Like if if this is just a hey, we just going to run with Dak and it just is what it is, then maybe we'll roll with T.J. Bass. But I I do want badly to get the run game going so uh fair fair point from you man fair 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 point from you let's get uh jack jack on the phone real quick and then we'll get back into the q a what's up jack jack Rod. what's happening brother what's happening brother cool sky how you doing all right all right what's up yes sir yes sir hey Vox, can i be messy real quick Vox? i like good mess man nothing better now, I'm going to upset the internet. 
I may even upset you guys. Oh, man. But I kind of have some background about what I'm about to say. Caleb Williams going to be a bust. Oh, man. I told you. Oh, I told you. Oof. Now. I mean, if he go to Chicago, oh, then he could have happened. It could have happened. Not far off. He has all the intangibles, athleticism, arm talent to succeed at the college level and the professional level. Yeah. But from the neck up, mm. he's not mature enough to handle the quarterback position in the NFL. So what does that come with? When you're so used to winning and you're so used to being celebrated mm. that and it's been proven and shown that his emotions are intact what? fully to accept the responsibility mm -hmm. of being an NFL quarterback. See, there's a different kind of animal you got to be to be a quarterback. It ain't just on talent. It ain't just Pat, – Pat, he don't just have just on talent. Sure. He has the know how to navigate through the bullshit. Mm. He doesn't let his emotions get the best of him. Mm. He's been tried, true, and tested with his family and other situations outside of football. But Caleb Williams in college, after him being so celebrated. Come on, stupid dog. Bitch, you gonna hold me up, you punk. JJ, JJ about to shoot somebody. Excuse me, I'm sorry. JJ about to, about to, he about to kill somebody on my show live right now. That's Yo, it. Jack, I, Jack went from my brother, my brother. <laughs> to the mother, mother. You a raggedy bitch, you. <laughs> you was spitting too. Go ahead, hey, Jack, Jack. I was gonna, I was gonna be disrespectful. But with all due damn disrespect, that wasn't that, 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 that wasn't that, that wasn't that wasn't disrespect. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh no. I, oh, oh, hey, I tell people I talk shit and I cuss because it keep my teeth clean. So I got to do it. So I, I just, you know, I, I pause for a minute. Gotcha. But, so 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 you so you saying that uh Kayla Williams is going to bust because you you're saying that he doesn't have the mental fortitude or or uh the uh, mental makeup to make it as a quarterback in the National Football League. Not just, you know, yeah, he's he, right he, now. He's he he's, got all the talent. Yeah. He'll give me a little circle on my end. So let me hit refresh on. Yeah, so it's just that streaming. So it's, I, we might have got lucky. It might it might have stayed again, we see. are live on my end, so let me see. Let me see. Let me see. All right, there we go. There yeah. we go. All right, we good. Chat, we good. We scrape. We scrape. I missed the drop on Bleach Report today. <laughs> Fooling around with y'all. But we good to go. We should be good to go. All right, all right. Boom, boom, Are we? Boom. Yeah, 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 yeah. It says it on. Yeah, yeah. My, let me uh, see if I can hear me. Yeah, yeah, okay. We good. We good. We good. All right, chat. We back at it again. Jack, Jack, Um, shot the stream. <laughs> he, he shot it. He shot the stream, but it's all good. We gonna get back into it. Let me actually. You gonna get questioning? Unlocked. Yep, we gonna get right back into that. Right back into the Q and A. So, let's see. We left off on Xavier Forte. Let's pull him up. See what he talking about. Xavier Forte says, "I'll give y'all thirty seconds to come back in here. Come on in." So we got Xavier left, and then we got two left, right? All right, yeah. I Xavier see. and Kelly the Kid. Yeah. yeah, Xavier and Kelly the Kid. Yep. And there's Elroy, but we talked about Elroy <laughs> a little bit ago, so <laughs> I'm just scrolling down. Yeah, yeah, Xavier and uh, and uh, K, Kelly the Kid. Gotcha. All right. Here we go. Um, How much does a team's, pardon me, how much does a college team scheme come into play in determining how a player would translate into the pros? Uh, Michigan's elite defense, uh, for example. Uh, however, everyone's playing a tick slower because of that scheme, if that makes sense. For sure. So that's something that you have to look for uh, when you're when you're watching film. You know, you have to think about how a team is using that that one player in particular. You have to think about how your team would use that player, and you have to give.